bent deck to line of dish views, truck decking, and railing, saddles, woodland brown, hollow, and 400 park grass. Application 7044 22, the town of Wethersfield seeks to create a memorial garden in memory of Lord Hirsch Hart, including planting, granite benches, memorial plaques, small water feature, landscape lighting, and bluestone service at Spanish Park Garden. Application 7045-22, more than physical features in place existing front steps with granite at 538 Main Street. Application 7046-22, shows the proposal seeking to install a 60-foot cedar bench and rear yard with one gate of ditch and board fence. Application 7047-22, Brian Shannon seeking to remove existing white picket fence at 249 Main Street. Application 7048-22, list of problems remove existing fence and replace the six foot cedar fence and yard install black and green fence across the driveway at 30 Center Street. Application 7049-22 Stephen Olet seeking to move existing aluminum siding and replace with massive hardwood double four inch vinyl siding of canal color at 42 Elm Street. On the letters of the Director's Commission, Kim will duly authorize data list at the 28th day of March 2020. Thank you. We're required to do that from the prior training, so bear with us, please. It can be a long night. We try to be as succinct as we can. We'll start with our first application, returning application 7029, the application at 3838 Old Tudor Lane. I think there are people on the boat. Yeah, we're having some issues. They're, they're that far. <laughs> um, if you want to sit yeah, down, do you, can you, yeah. um, so since we were here last week, you've done yeah. an update on the application material, which I think everybody has seen. She can send, yeah, some stuff related to that part. It should be the part. Yeah. So I apologize. I promised you guys to get some gloves together, and I just couldn't get my act together. Oh, that's fine. Uh, we got some gloves. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
by, especially if you can treat the privacy screen, say the same color as the house or sit or a yeah. dark color, so it doesn't stand out as as a bright white thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the seal side is, is a very, I think it's very pleasant color, obviously. Well, it's not, wood. So the seal's not going to get painted. Uh, no, it's so, not good just to paint seal, yeah. but the, eventually the uh, under turn. part could get painted. Yeah. Okay, because that and that the seal is not as good as paint. And the balance of the information is the same, the railings and all of that. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. it's all the same materials. <laughs> Hearing none, are there any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move back. Thank you very much for coming in. Yes. We'll move on to application 7036, the application. Oh, I apologize. Could you identify yourself, name, and address for the record? Yep, my name is Paul Yeager. Uh, it's business I'm, address is fine. Yeah, 647 Ridge Road. Thank you very much. Yep. Move on to 7036, the application for 111 Garden. Elevations of the house the way it stands today, uh, the structure. Uh, the upper elevations are the existing house that stands today. Uh, proposed elevation of the proposed uh, house uh, would be by front of the front of our gable over the front door. Uh, if you take a look at that today, we can hand out some pictures. Uh, it's a wood structure. It's sitting on the wood structure. It's sitting on metal posts. It's actually pulling away from the house, um, so it needs to be removed and rebuilt. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are doing that um, to make it a little bit more metal. Uh, we are looking to increase the width by about two feet. Uh, but with it, uh, at the same time, we're going to keep the same pitch of the roof and keep the same arch of the present door. Uh, we would be looking to shift it over about two feet from the present door location, uh, while it's not shaped that the additional window uh, to the side of the front entrance. Uh, we are looking at side lights on either side of that front door. Uh, looking at that one, this actually shows the starburst over the yeah. top of the door. That's not Smith, so that's not, I think in the back of the old it's a square light. There we go, sorry. That's not good. Okay. Yeah, um, so further in the package. So we're trying to keep the main body of the house. So I can see we're keeping the same with the official right now. There's presently a sunroom off to the left hand side of the house. 
Uh, Judge Montas wrote the pictures on that also. That sunroom is actually constructed. It's uh, sitting on a really thick box. Um, it's actually pulled away um, from the house. Uh, you'll see in these pictures where it's actually settled and all the windows are point. You see the angle of it. It actually is where it matches up to the existing house. It's actually kind of pulled away from the house. So we're going to be taking down the sunroom building a similar structure to the side of it. Uh, we are looking to come out of the carbon which is just in the center of the building. Uh, this comes out about 13 and a half feet. Uh, once again, keeping the same roof pitch as Judge Montez. Uh, we had also talked last time about putting a porch across the front of the house. Uh, we understand that this style of house we may not have one. Uh, we may still like to have some porch element. Um, so we propose to put a porch down uh, the side, the right hand side of the house and there's a driveway. So that's the extension to our foot frame. We built the porch about seven feet wide. Uh, we have columns uh, for that roof structure and use the same roof pitch. The addition itself, uh, the majority of the addition uh, will be off the back of the house. As you see off the back, uh, and about 32 feet wide. Um, we can scroll back to the property survey. One? No. Uh, which there. on this survey, uh, it didn't blow up on here. The survey portion. What I actually notice is that the house is actually at a slight skew on the property. So it would be a smaller square towards the front is the original house location. Uh, but again, we're going to be keeping that whole closer in the house, but because it's at a skew, uh, we kind of had to stagger uh, the addition as we go back. So he comes up on the bottom of the, the sunroom of the next to the bath, which is actually the master bath, and then the larger part of the area is, uh, is the kitchen. It's the 32 by 36, and then over here on the top kitchen is the covered porch. Uh, we're also looking at building a detached garage. Uh, the garage itself would be about 24 feet by 32 feet deep. Uh, so it's under, we have a design requirement that says it can't be over 350 square feet, so if it's under that 300 square feet requirement. Uh, we also try to keep it far to the upper portion so it puts it to the backyard. Uh, we have architectural elevations of uh, the garage in the package uh, using the same roof pitch. Uh, there's some different type of uh, windows that you can drive towards as uh, we have the front door. So we Also, um, materials. Uh, do you give a material package in there? Yeah. So we're using the carbon windows, two over two, black. Two divided. Door is going to be simulated as you can see with the. Which one? I'm sorry. Your front door? The one that the front door. Sorry. Solid wood front door for using. Back door, two over two. Not that one. Oh. And the materials that, that we're going to be using uh, will be a hardy board. So There's a sample so in your pocket. Marvin Elevator. In the design on one of the prints, you show a walkway, a covered walkway from the main body of the house to the garage. Yes. That is not part of the application today, or it is? It is. Are you? No, it's 
say, uh, is that all that you Um, so what do we need to talk about? The columns, as you can see, um, the permit, permit cast columns, right? and they'll be strategically located on the porch going around. Also, we need to get covered walkway. There's a sample in the packet. that I want to put on the side of the driveway, would, would there be an objection to using a metal black roof on that? I have some pictures here. This is for the mats, like a standing seam. Yeah. So I wanted to see. see this is an awful picture here. I know. <laughs> from the car. I couldn't go on that couldn't go on the property. Oh my yeah. gosh. But, so, I don't I don't know who can best address this. Is this a standing scene roof? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, snap box or or folded? Yeah, folded. Yeah, just some of it just came up. Yeah, it's folded. Okay. Uh, not snap box. And that is going to be going where? On the porch. side porch. Okay. Uh, there. When you say the side porch, so there's I'm looking the at open the, porch. I'm sorry. The open the porch. So we're talking about this. Can you look at the screen and just make sure that I'm pointing to the right section? Is this where you're referring to? Okay. So, see. Seeing as you're not decided yet, the, the problem you're going to run into there aesthetically is with that. If you're going to use snap block standing seam, the only way you can seal that hip roof with a snap block, I think it's a folded though. It's not It is a hip roof. No, it's not. So if you're using folded, yeah, great. And you're doing copper at that point, yeah. Then Go for it. Okay. If you're using snap block, the problem with that is you're going to have a large cap that looks totally out of the way. Okay. That's it. So I, I have a 
questions just about the windows and the side addition along the driveway side. Are those, tell us what they are, the casements? I'm sorry. Are they casement windows in the addition? Yes. Those, those are those casements. Are casements. Those are casements. So there are over the counter. One, two, three, and four pairs of casements. Yep. Um, you're talking on the street side right now or on the porch or the left? Sure. On the addition oh. driveway side. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's very far back. I just want to make sure. It's actually down there. It's steep. Yeah, you know, the bottom is the steep of the road. Yeah. I'll just see it. Right. Okay. What I'm curious of is, though, what drove the decision of two over two windows as opposed to six over one exactly in, in the existing that. house? Which, I mean, the existing house is early 20th century. And at that point, two over two windows were passe and out of style. It's funny because my wife looked into that. You know what I mean? And we were looking back and forth, and she started thinking it back in the history, and she did see a lot of two by like, two over two. Earlier. Certainly, if you look at pictures of houses in, say, 1920, there's a whole bunch of two over twos. Just like in your case, if you look at pictures 30 years from now, there's going to be a lot of houses with black windows. People are going to be putting in white then. I think she went to the six over two. Hey, Hazel is six over one. The other thing that I was um, curious about in the what is now a sunroom that's going to be made a little lar larger to the left in the front of the house, you're using regular double hung windows instead of more of a porch looking window. I'm trying to preserve the original body of the house as much as possible. And so that would be a classic 1920s sunroom three season porch which even though we know you're making it bigger and it's going to be integrated into the house, from the outside, if you used a window, again, more porch looking, maybe a casement there, you would you'd be preserving more of the facade of the house and that left side, something to consider. And I also, I think the door change is lovely, um, getting rid of that half moon, but I actually really like a simple door on the front of this house, maybe even without the side lights, um, again, it's a very, very simple, completely unornamented house. Um, and that, you know, that is a, a much fancier door that would not be uh, that particular house. So it's something to consider. I don't know. I think other people will weigh in. They might disagree. Um, I do agree. And I, I think that that would also, again, be a multi tenant at the four twins as it as it as is now. So tell us a little bit about the covered walkway and the materials for that. Yeah the covered walkway again we would use obviously it'd be just a roof with the pillars underneath it that would connect the garage to the house. And the roof would be so you know we were actually so one of one of the reasons we didn't draw it up yet is because we got to figure out the elevation why so it actually has to step up as you come to the house. So your plan in terms of, you know, you don't plan to want to work on those to set up, are they, is it part of this application or not? Um, you can come in with the second application later. It would be too much of a change for there to be an amendment, but you would come in second there later so on. How would that work? Well, I think we might have other details that you might want to think about too, because you need to work on the roof on the side, um, maybe get a sample for us and a better picture of what it's going to look like. Contemplate those window and maybe a door change. Yeah, and think I about. think of that because I also was thinking for a covered walkway, maybe it's worth with a metal roof there too. But I really don't know that. You know, it's like I have to say the large walkway, but the covered walkway, but. I'm just curious whether 
if it's a walkway that's attached to the garage and the house is going to attach the garage at that point, there's not going to be a garage. There's going to be a six inch brick. Okay. <laughs> um, what's the length you mentioned with kind of six feet? What, what do you just take the run for 32 feet? Or 32 feet. I, I totally understand. I have lived in two houses with attached racks in my backyard and making the mad dash of grocery to discover that. Oh, I've never had a like a um, I, I wasn't at the at your first meeting, so I do want to say it's lovely to see these houses are really, truly beautiful. Um, beautiful little house. It's nice to see it shine some love. So thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us that we have to cover tonight? I guess the flooring on the front porch, it, it, you said it's going to be slate, slab, yeah. put stone, what size? Uh, probably going to be a two by two. And what are those front stairs? Are those, are those kind of like a that, that's yeah. exact and the rises are also the tracks and then exit. The, the, the patio in at the end of the stairs goes all the way down. Okay. Yeah. And I will say it's so nice as opposed to now, it's much more appropriate for the district. Exactly, exactly. Thank exactly. You. So we did try to consider a lot of things. I mean, the house is, I got the option to see that shit. Oh, yeah. It's a shit we know. Termite, termites, I found out. I toured it. What's that? <laughs> I toured it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, we really appreciate your efforts. Um, we're excited for its next life. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> There's nothing else. Oh, do you want to see a picture of the chimney brick? I love that. I would actually. Yeah. This is what we're looking at right now. So that's for both the rebuilt chimney and the new chimney. Can you just tell me which one it is so I don't forget? It's number 340. Do you have a pen? What's the name of it? Please. English Manor. English Manor.
of the miniature size. So everyone oh, they're see. behind you, oh, Larissa. Okay. They're on the table behind you. Oh, okay. Everything is over there if you want to grab all of that stuff. So, this house is originally um, a two family when we purchased it. After thinking about what we wanted to do with the property, we decided to go commercial with it, or at least supposed to go commercial with it. Um, it's got a darling porch, and I want the public to be able to utilize it and enjoy it. Um, so, we decided to propose going commercial. And with that being said, I wanted to create almost like a village feel without um, being uh, too modern with it, because I know additions and historic homes can get really, um, you know, modern, and I didn't want to go that route. At least I feel like I didn't go that route. Um, I carried the same materials that were approved for the front of the house throughout the um, addition, except for the hardy plank. Um, but when Don was removing the cedar shakes um, from the, get the first renovation, we noticed that there was a four inch reveal clapboard. So that was um, what was on the house prior to the cedar shakes being applied. Um, currently, the house in the rear, as you know, I don't know if you want to pull up a rear picture of what the house looks like right now. Um, there is no, in my opinion, historic. Um, relevance or significance to the main structure of the house. There's no slate, there's a tapped roof, there's asphalt, there's vinyl contemporary windows. The roof lines of the, um, the house in the rear is very contemporary and it really doesn't fit the aesthetic of the front. So um, I kind of designed something that I feel would encompass the beauty of the front and carry it through to the back. Um, I proposed doing two over two windows instead of the one over one vinyl that exists currently throughout the entire house. Oh, um, not that one, the rear of the house. Um, yeah, I was just bringing up the other. Oh, you got it. I'm, is it something that you have that you submitted? Is it what, what you're referring to? Um, no, we usually go on Google, right? And pick up those. Uh, it's not going to pick up the back of the house. Oh, it won't. Well, it doesn't no. do the back. Oh, okay. Oh, got it, got it, okay. Well, I do have it on my phone if you wanted to. It's okay. Okay, you got it. Okay, good, okay, good. So you, you know what it looks like. <laughs> yep, so the addition um, that was proposed in the early 2000s uh, was approved by the historic commission back then. Um, I don't think any of you were on the board at that point. Um, unfortunately, once our tenants left, we got to see the, the disrepair of the rear of the house. It's um, when it was, when the addition was uh, put on the house, it had uh, some kind of crazy uh, structural concerns and it took us to gut the inside in order to actually see what was going on there. So the portion that we are proposing to remove is not, we're not necessarily changing the footprint of it or the roof line minus the um, addition part that's going over the existing bump out, um, but we're just kind of um, creating more of like a story, if you will, with that front area, because what's currently there is just like this. I don't know if you want to grab the. Well, I have the 70s picture. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So that little bump out on the right hand side, um, we propose going above that to also carry the slate over so we can get rid of the, um, the asphalt and the tab that's currently there. And by doing that, that also helps to buffer the addition in the back. Um, from the public's right of, of way. Um, 
it's not something that I'm like, you know, it'll make or break it, but I do think that that would add to the, the look of the house completely, rather than leaving it kind of like an odd uh, bump out, if you will. Um, the roof lines, I got kind of creative with. Uh, the reason why I chose to keep the pitched um, peak on the front of the property was kind of to create a feeling of that was the original structure. And then the, uh, the rear addition was going to be obviously a slightly different so that it clearly defines what is like original and what is added on. Um, I did a lot of research in terms of adding on to historical properties and I saw that a lot of the roof lines are um, lower. Every, every addition that goes on to the building, it drops down. So I did that as well in the design. So nothing is competing with the um, original roof line. Um, I'm trying to think what else. The lighting is consistent with what was approved for the front of the building. There's no changes there. Um, we did put obviously asphalt on the rear part of the addition, um, just because again, we wanted to <coughs> kind of define the original from the, the add-on. Um, Peter boxes, obviously that's just an aesthetic. I can live without them if that the commission doesn't like the flower boxes. Um, I also wanted to tie in the horizontal rhythm in the front of the building with the horizontal rhythm in the back. That's why I put a flat roof on that secondary bump out. Um, and the uh, overhang in the very, very rear with the um, porch columns that are consistent with the front porch columns. So all in all, I know it's obviously a lot to look at, and I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of compl compliments or criticisms on this, um, but I really truly feel like it is a heck of a lot better than <laughs> what's currently there. Um, and I'm really excited about the project. So I appreciate all the detail and yes. a lot of thought obviously went into it. And I appreciate how complete all the plans yes. are and that we've Thank got you. all the extra details yep. Makes and such the a difference. view from above and the plot plans and all yep. of that. Um, I have a broader concern over massing mm -hmm. in, in the parking lot. Can you tell us what the current square footage is mm -hmm. and what the new square footage is. Yep. So if you look at the, the legend, it, it shows that um, the, okay, so the, the, the portion of the building that's to remain is 1260. We are proposing to remove 90 square feet. Um, and the 90 square feet that we would be removing is four feet, eight inches, I believe, um, from the front bump out. And the reason for that is so that we can put a walkway to get to the rear of the building. Um, that, and it shows that in the plans as well. Um, not the, the, that plot plan, but in the actual um, visual. Um, the portion that we plan on rebuilding is 750 square feet. So all in all, when you remove basically the back of the, the um, existing structure and add on to it all together, it's 3,130 square feet. Additional. Additional, but that's including what's currently there that's to be removed and rebuilt. That 90. No, nope, nope. the 90 is the portion that's being removed completely. Yes. 750. Yes. 1,500 Yes. 1,500 Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, I was going to say, it's a lot more than that, 750 from 3,100 change. So oh, it's because of the second floor, I think, that he was talking about, right. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. And then I'm concerned about, I'm really concerned about the parking, because what we have now is, um, what was your home that you were living in? Yeah built entirely out. You've got a shed and a very small amount of grass. And then the property next to it is empty. You've got the old academy. You're not going to have a driveway for this property there. You're going to use your salon driveway. So there is a driveway. Um, the driveway is exactly what's currently there. will stay there. It's just going to be shorter. Okay. So we're keeping the driveway. Um, it's just going to stop at the bump out. So, yeah, of course. I, how 
four cars going to get into Saskatchewan. So the cars will be coming in through the Salon and the Historic Commission. It's exactly enough space for a, um, a two-way. Um, Thankfully, that's not ours. Yeah. That's, that's um, a couple of, couple of quick questions yep. about that back here. You had a fence back there yep. and part it down. I assume we're really repairing. Yep. Yeah, we had some off. really bad windstorms, and I don't like anything to look like sure. it's falling down. <laughs> so you I'm say repairing. in the written portion yep. of the in your packet that the landscape is just for purposes of yeah, for visual purposes. Right. The reason why I'm waiting on the parking component is because I'm working closely with the town because Historic Commission or Historic Society owns the 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 house that obviously that is part of this whole project and the town and I are working on creating a much more efficient parking lot even for them. So we're gonna, and we all have, we have to work with the fire marshal to make sure that the fire marshal can get around and whatnot. Um, but when we purchased the property, we purchased it because, one of the reasons why we purchased it is because it had that land in the back and it's just a weird sliver of land. Um, and parking is a necessity in Old Weathersfield um, I've been one of the few businesses that has ever put a parking lot in, but I opened up my salon and I would never propose a building. Um, if I didn't have the ability to put a parking lot in, I wouldn't do that because I understand how parking is. It's a big concern for everybody. So that, yep, we, we all we have to go back and forth. And yep. Answer, so we definitely, yep. So I just want to kind of drill down and show, call out a landscaped area in front of the parking lot that's visible at the back of the open property. Mm -hmm. And so what what would your thoughts be about arborvitaes? Yep, arborvitaes because they grow tall, they grow wide, and they grow beautifully. So that's what I did for the salon for Granges and uh, across the back and their stomach. They're really, really pretty. So Very good. thank you. Yep. And how many parking spots are you? I Counted 24 yep. parking spots at that 24 yep. is what that, yep. that run. So we're going to have parallel with houses and the properties that you own on Main Street. Correct. It would be parallel parking from the salon corner all the way to the um, almost to the corner of where the shed is. Um, the shed would be removed. It's in bad condition anyway. Uh, we would not be proposing to put another shed back there. We do want to put uh, flowering pear trees on every panel going down uh, the, the fence line. Um, we have those in the front of the salon now and they grow tall and wide and beautiful and they offer great coverage um, for any neighboring properties. Uh, in terms of lighting back there. Um, Marissa, if I could just jump back there. Yeah, so the sure. fence is there, it's, yep. it's putting up the new sections. Yep. What's gonna be the buffer? How far out from the fence so will be the green feet. space? So you're gonna come four, four feet out, feet out. pear trees, yep, four and grass. Out. And then we have the, the the parking lot, I mean, the, the parallel parking, then we have to have 22 feet um, for people to get through, to maneuver. And then you have your um, your 90 degree or 45, I can't remember the, how they describe it, but the regular parking this way. <laughs> so so just to make sure I'm understanding mm -hmm. this correctly, you yep. mentioned, you've got slot parking that goes, people will come in front, they'll be parking with headlights going towards Main Street. So they're coming in and that they're that's with slot parking. Correct. And then the part that runs back closer to the Robins Hood is going to be parallel. So there should not be any lights glaring at anyone. Yeah. Like and then in terms of um, parking lighting, because I know that's going to be a concern of everyone, the same parking lighting that we have at the salon, it's very, it's almost like candle lit. It's very, very soft. We've never had any complaints from anyone development in 2017, we would be consistent in using those as well so that it is um, less obvious if that makes any sense. Because I know there is some parking light and that's very tall and very bright. Could you address those, uh, going back to unless anyone else has a question on this, address those bump outs that you have, the flat roofs, are those stairwells or are those um, panels so but when I was designing it, it's, it's obviously a long run, and originally I didn't have that second bump out right there. Not the first one with the peak, but the second one with the flat roof, and it looked like a barn to me. It was ugly and just not interesting. Um, so because I'm obviously turning this commercial, I wanted to give it a feel of where, you know, people are like, oh, that's so cool. That's, a, that's its own little entity, and this is its own little entity, so that's 
the reason why. And I also wanted to repeat the storm, uh, not the storm, the horizontal rhythm from the front of the flat roof on the porch line, um, just so that there's a little bit of uh, consistency. So one concern I have is a small thing. Yep. But you mentioned how there's a front part and the back part. Yes. And that, that it's, a, it's sort of a ongoing. Correct. Here's the columns in the way back. Because that ties it back in hard to the front. I'm totally fine and with that because they're very expensive. And you're trying to do something like, different. <laughs> they're, they're gorgeous. <laughs> they're they're very expensive. So if you say no, I'm fine with that. But it's supposed to read. <laughs> but, but it's supposed to read as something else as a development later on. That's, that's, that's yeah. 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 I, I want to say, I think that where we're going to see this the most, the vantage point, yes. is going west. Yes. I mean, right. We're really not going to see a lot of the details of the back part. No. We are not. Your clients and customers yes. are, but we are not. Yes. Um, and I I do think that the flat bump out on that, that mm -hmm. flat east view, um, to the extent that we see it around the big house to the left, um, it's nice the way it breaks it up. It looks modern. It, it is modern, mm -hmm. and that's that's maybe okay. Okay. So I, I, I personally think that's pretty effective as opposed to just a big flat wall. Yeah. And a big flat roof, which yeah. just looks kind of more. The other reason why I didn't want to do the peak again is because I feel like the peak has already been done very well in the front of the building with the first bump out. But if we repeated it again back there, it would feel so purposeful that it would like kind of really look a little off. I like the, that you pulled the arch window around to the yes. that stuff. So. Yeah, because I wanted from the back of the house to look like it was. Well, know, that's your most visible spot. Yeah. So. My turn. <laughs> um, I think the design is spectacular. I really, yeah. I really enjoy it. But um, my biggest issue is just the space. Okay. It's it's a it's a, a big, nasty kind of small plot of land. And I understand that you've got a big parking lot in the back, mm -hmm. but you're taking that second two stories and you're pushing it back into the back view of the, the properties that are behind you, um, so to impact them. Um, I've seen some buildings in town get put in between other buildings, just residential mm -hmm. ones, and I think it's I think it's troubling and it's congested. Um, if this was a double wide lot, I think it's really spectacular. I love development in this in this town. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think people have seen it kind of go first that way. Um, but for me, the lot, my personal opinion, the lot is just too small for this size. Maybe it can be scaled back. It, 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 what portion of the of it is uh, too, too, too big for you? Is well, it the just, length or the width? It's, it's the double that size. So to me, it's yeah, it's it's a, a two stories going all the way back to the front. So for me, it's a, yeah, I just I look at the you know the arborvitae is on the left hand side. They're there now. That may not always be there. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, it's just a little too congested for a lot. Just like no, I and, and on the streetscape. I mean, for me, I think we're jamming a lot into a small space. And for me. We do regulate commercial parking, which mm -hmm. I appreciate that you admitted that's going to be commercial yeah. use uh, because we don't always get that. No, um, no, no. And so the parking, you know, I'm, I'm really concerned about that parking lot running in the back of all those properties. You're going to see it. You know, we've got commercial parking. Yeah. Obviously, parking is a big issue. You know, you left yep. where you live because it's so busy on that corner right yep. now. Yeah. Um, but I think that there are other ways to provide for parking in a lunish field that the town's working on without taking up everybody's backyards to do it. If you own all the property now, yep. you know, in the future, you can sell the house, that land, the salon, and then we're, we end up with this parking lot behind all these residential homes or mixed use properties. If I didn't have to put the parking lot in, I wouldn't do it. I don't, I just, that's not something like it's very expensive for us to do, like from an investment standpoint, plus all the landscaping that goes into it, the buffering, the lighting, and this and that. But you, um, the town, I think, will require me to do a parking lot because for every 1,500 square feet, you 
have to put in seven, uh, seven point five parking spots. So I, um, I hit the, the mark with the addition size. I, I provided actually I think a little bit extra um, of parking based off of this size. Um, that is a right now the parking that goes back there is pretty substantial. The driveway goes past the and the edge of my house. Um, and then it kind of creates like this turnaround, if you will. So there's already a decent amount of pavement back there. Um, no, if you remove what I, if you take the portion that I'm removing off the driveway and turning into green space, um, and you put it where it is, it's still gonna be obviously extra, but it's not a significant amount more than, um, than what kind of is there right right in that area. 24 spots is flat, plus the drive. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but again, we had to do it with the salon, and um, parking is a major issue in town, so <laughs> that's a slippery slope. But again, if the commission says, no, we don't want a parking lot, I would, I would be really happy. <laughs> Because it's very expensive. You know, obviously we will have a, a conversation with all of us, but yeah, I, I want to say it's a big addition, but there are many places along Main Street where this would be a problem. Actually, don't have a problem because 172, 173 is quite sizable. It's much taller, it's much more massive, and it's got a very sizable addition across the back. In terms of the parking, there are parking lots along every single property in the section. Range all the way to Chester Park. Um, and I I actually think the park could be done here with some buffering. And it's tight as tax. I'm not taking my car back here because I'll hit somebody. <laughs> but um, I, I don't have a problem with it. I think the issue, I mean, I don't know what zoning is going to say about all this, and most of the rest of the the whole registry as it is now. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a commercial park. And if you look into that's open now, yep. absorb rainwater and all, they're going to be yep. a whole issue with the drain. We have to do exactly what we did at the salon. We have to put a full drainage system in. It was about $75,000 to do the salon parking. So we're looking at about that, if not more, to do this parking lot. And is that we have like highway. Your property or would it have to be? <laughs> no, it's going to be, it's going to base, there won't be any runoff. Like everything is going to go into the drainage system. Just like it is at the salon right now. I mean, there are some tanks in our in our ground. They made us put these gigantic retainers. So it's pretty intense. But you know, we did it, and we don't have any issues with our parking right now at the salon. So. It would require doing anything on any abutting property. No, over. no, Just we have to hire a geotechnical engineer. Um, Maxwell is going to come out and dig borings, so we can like do a full uh, testing of the soil, and then. He determines, uh, he tells our civil engineer, this is what you need in order for there to be zero runoff and zero issues with anyone else um, around us. Yeah, we take that really, really seriously. That's, you know, something that we care about. Anything else? Anything else you need to share with us tonight? Mm -hmm.
is taking it from 47 feet to 102 feet, which is super long. Yes, our building is long. This was added on to the 1930s. Um, but each addition is graduated as it goes back. This one seems to be quite straight except for the very bottom, so it's like going straight all the way across. So that to me is not historic. Um, I think most people in town know we spent an awful lot of restoration on our house, so we're very, very conscious about how how houses next to us look, and we were horrified to see this look in with such a massive amount. Um, the other concern I have is that it appears that the plans run right along our property line, which I don't know how you build a commercial structure that big on a property. The trees that are outlined, the arbor vitaes that are outlined on the north side of that property are our trees. And I'm concerned about snow sliding off in those trees. But again, my concern is the sheer mass. This is a Victorian from 1880. It's supposed to be larger than a colonial. We have a colonial go up two stories and run this longer than ours when it starts closer to the sidewalk than ours. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor or against? Yes, yes. Lorraine Powers, 126 Main Street. Um, I want to echo that I think that that addition is just massive and detracts from the look of the neighborhood. And um, I live only a couple doors down. I'm going to be walking by this every day. And right now, there's a quaint little two family house that's there. And this, I'm going to quote Buzz Willard for those that remember Buzz. <laughs> It looks like the old shops in Mystic Village, and it doesn't look like it belongs in Old Weathersfield. It's just too big, um, and I feel bad for the people that live on the street behind here. If you look for parking lot, it's like in their backyard. So I, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's more zoning than historic. But I also don't like. I know that parking is a problem. She wouldn't need so much parking if she didn't have such a big building. And I don't like that we're paving over so much of old Weathersfield. I think there's some lawns now that you know add to the character of the town and add to the beauty of the town, and we're losing that. And when I looked at the description of some of the things she's doing, nobody talked about this. She wants to take the chimney down and put a faux chimney with brick veneer. I, you know, I didn't think we were allowed to take something down and not replace it with the same material. So I'm uh, questioning why that would be allowed. Not, and uh, I think part of the charter for the town was that commercial buildings were allowed that's not supposed to detract from the livability of the neighborhood and, and the residents in the neighborhood. And that definitely detracts from the comfort and livability of the residents in the neighborhood. Thank you. Um, anyone else wishing to speak in favor against city? How the city views? Um, <laughs> oh, I just uh, want to say um, address for the record. Sorry. Everybody. Address for the record. I'll oh, start. 14 and 4. Thank you. Um, uh, I think it uh, will be a great addition. I think it's very responsible. Getting a lot of the cars off the streets has been a huge problem down in that area. And um, uh, slur. I think people uh, were concerned about that initially. And um, the salon operates and cars park behind it, and they're not adding to that congestion. Uh, they've got big problems they've got to resolve down there. And they're not adding to the problem, they're helping resolve the main problem, and that's parking. But I like uh, what you're suggesting. Any kind of you know, changes that might, that commission might want to um, make to um, small changes, I think would be fine. But, this is a village business area, and this is what I think we set out to do. Um, you know, provided it was developed with uh, the commission's comments. It's also a residential area. Thank I you. Know, I'm going to let one person speak yeah. at a time, please. And so. just before I conclude, um, I have lived here my whole life. I've watched these areas go through various changes. Um, I, I expect commissions will be things and uh, lend their expertise to the discussion. And, uh, so, but again, it's village business. There have been times where I've gone, but I, I like what's happening, and I like what's happening today. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Eric? Hi. Thank you. Frank Dolores, 
person. Uh, lived in Lowesville my whole life, 37, around 65. Been there for 20 years. We are on the northeast corner behind the facility. Um, I think the proposed facility belongs in Glastonbury, not in Old It's just a monster. And all these nice things I hear people saying, when you look at my series of questions, I am also uh, an engineer, I'm a city engineer for the city of Hartford. Um, where is the dumpster that's going to be in place? I don't need grass in my backyard. Anderson Farm on that end, I'm going to put the dumpster over there. That's fine. But I don't want a dumpster anywhere near my park. Before they come oh. up or down. All right, we're not going to have conversations. We're going to let park. everyone have their moment to speak. Um, you can speak too, but he gets his. The parking lot poles. Now, I already have white coming to my back that week. So I have to work to it. I don't care what they say about you know, how you shade them. They're going to come in. Just, that's just a fact. And how many are they going to be? 10, 12, who knows? Will the parking lot be available 24 7? I like going to the old town like a lot of other people. But that, guess what? Guess where they're going to park? I don't need that aggravation. You're not going to live there. I don't need that aggravation. Um, the house is hot. Back to the light. These, light, these lights are going to shine into our into our neighbors, into our yard, into our windows. I don't want to have blinds up all the time. No concern about that. I know this is a store condition. I understand that. But I think about the noise ordinance. If that's going to be an issue. So think about that as well because there's going to be a lot more noise. I have a very quiet backyard at the city. I love it. Back waivers are very nice. And but you know, it's going to be noisy. Um, and then I heard about the, you know, the parking lot and how she's going to collect all the water. It's okay. I don't want to get into the whole thing about the storms. That's what I do at work. But we have 200 year storms. There's a lot of water. There's no way you can build a system to collect all of it. You're taking all this green away. And we call it impervious between the house addition and the parking lot. It's all impervious. Where the hell is all that water going to go? It's, it's going to go in my backyard. That's where it's going to go. I, I, and that's going to be a huge problem. You know, I'm, I'm good with development in all of this. This is just not the right idea. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming in. Anyone else in favor of this I'll say story, but sorry. Um, I have a lot of concerns, and uh, I discussed a lot of this through the letter. Um, and the current property is right up to and just over the line. I believe when we bought our property over 10 years ago, we had a sign up for one corner of the old structure on the north side pump out. Uh, so basically, we put this extremely large or massive structure right on the property line. I don't know how it would be maintained or built without coming out to our property. And it's just a significant uh, lot to get thrown. But I get uh, privacy screen. Also, with the driveway or the back parking lot. All those cars are going to be heading right toward our backyard, and what's going to stop the uh, lights from west into our backyard all the time? And unless you know, I have some sort of control on the driveway, what's going to stop people from parking in the middle of my tenants or tenants just about maybe going over the farm? And that people coming through from that parking lot to our property at the farm. So, um, it would be, I guess, from my point of view, a lot better look, looking if that was to graduate down even more similar to ours, uh, where it's basically, you know, the single level, you can view the street a lot more, and 
the last one was posted to both Main Street and Robinson Drive. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hi, Greg Burwell, 27 Robinswood Drive. Uh, our property backs up to the parking lot at Kimi Center. And we regularly are having to pick up all of the trash from the folks that go to the bar and don't clean up after themselves. And I'm very afraid that that's going to happen uh, in this situation as well. I also find the addition to be just way too overwhelming for the neighborhood. It's much, much too large. I, I, I'm very concerned about it. Thank you very much. Anyone else here in favor or against? Yes, sir. I'm uh, Greg Narsiki in Carolina, 3345 Hill Road in Wethersfield. I'm the son and executor of Alice Narsiki, the property directly behind the post. Addition, uh, I guess I haven't been on the wall and went through my whole life, but I didn't realize the property is now commercial. It's always been residential as far as I know. Um, if this was a residential addition, I think I'd be, I'd say good, but uh, the parking lot situation, uh, this lake was a she had put up a, a fence, it's only six feet high, it helps. It used to be horrible with the headlights coming in from the driveway, people were coming off Main Street, right into the kitchen window, Right into the family room, uh, especially worse in the winter. There's nothing up, nothing at all. I mean, pear trees are wonderful when they're in bloom, but I don't believe they hold their leaves in the winter. Uh, this fence is not going to screen headlights from anybody coming in there, any, anything. I'm also concerned about the lights from the proposed parking lot. It's supposed to be going green now. If there was a way to do something without parking in the back, I think that's more in keeping. I'm also concerned. Who's going to police this parking lot after hours? People from the bar are going to use it as a sort of an annex when the word gets out. We're going to the Charles. Charles is another thing. You know, it's off the topic, but the outside dining, it's very detrimental to the use and enjoyment of the people on Robinson's Drive in their backyards and people are having drinks and music and whatever. We don't know when the structure is up. It's going to be commercial. Who knows what, what's going to be in there? I, I, was, I, I didn't realize it was retail, but I took a close look at the drawings. Uh, the residential something, provide housing for some people. You know, I like the idea of the, just a couple of cars in the front and it stops. But I, I do think uh, reviewing the criteria for typical of appropriateness, it talks about relationship with the proposal to its immediate streetscape and to the uh, district as a whole in terms of size, scale, massing, and proportions. And I think it's three times as big as the existing structure, roughly. Um, I don't know, it doesn't seem to me to fit in with the existing structure. They did a tremendous job renovating what I consider a fairly not very attractive home. They really put a lot of effort in it. Everything they do is always first rate in terms of quality of construction. Nothing to do with that. But I do share the concerns that have been raised by other neighbors. Um, and uh, I am concerned about the light towers, what's going to happen after hours. Um, I think once it's up, if it's, res if it's commercial, if it's allowed, I just, I have very deep concerns about what's going to happen. And it, and I do think this is, it, it, it's out of balance with this idea of trying to having a living district, and in my opinion. Thank, thank, thank you very you. much. Anyone else in favor or against? Yes, sir. Norm Cavoli, 14 Center Street right around the corner from the location. Uh, I will see that building when I go out. Uh, I built the house right near the Charles restaurant. It was there. Also very concerned about the noise, uh, the rubbish on the ground, people talking. Uh, Charles' owner did a great job protecting help with the parking. Yet there's rubbish once in a while, I pick it up. The noise he tries to control, uh, the parking, he does the best he can. And the people, they're friendly. They go there to have a good time. It doesn't bother me at all, okay? Building like that, if it's acceptable to the town, will not certainly bother me. And if Marissa, Tony, and Don are involved, I'm sure it'll be done great. It'll look nice and last forever. So again, as experienced building a home near a commercial building, 
that the owners of Charles are very satisfied, and hopefully those three will satisfy the neighbors in their concerns also. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else in favor or against? Hearing none, I think we have a couple of letters or they're all duplicates of what we've heard already. Uh, one we've already spoken as two tenants of the of the party and I have the one from the Senate. Uh, maybe we'll, they're part of the record if you want to just highlight if they're in favor yes, uh, or against. Yeah. The two tenants, uh, 172, 176 Main Street, they have left the property. Uh, both are there and they were identified earlier by the owner of the property. Right? If they're concerned about the, the headlights uh, passing, as uh, mentioned, uh, in the home changing to a large commercial structure, uh, the noise. Uh, what Maybe happens? Just the names for the records. Yeah, so that, that the first tenant name is Deborah, and it's A N D E R E G G. Uh, the second tenant is Elizabeth Phillips. And one quick email. Uh, dear Kim, I'm writing support of Antonio Mosso Minochi's HTC application for an addition to the rear of 164 66 Main Street. Uh, solid record, beautifully and sensitively executed restorations on Main Street. Uh, it's going to adhere to those standards. Uh, the village collection of vibrant historic properties that credit their uh, restoration of lighted buildings on 146 Main Street is a spark that ignited the Renaissance of Main and Center areas now experience. I encourage the commission to approve their application. Not quite sure how she is. Amy Northrup Whitlock, as a resident of 17th Century, she also signs as executive director with the historic society. She will attach the property also. Those are those comments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate the detail again. Am I able to comment back on the, the public comment? Um, very quickly, I think we've got a huge package um, to know still. The project itself, I never want to uh, make anyone feel uncomfortable ever. That's never my intention. Um, if there's a way that I can put up a different buffer um, for the, the fence line, I will do so. I'll put Arbor Vibes. Feel like that's a better uh, suggestion. Um, in terms of the massing of the property, I know it on there it appears very large, but when you go into the back and I take it all off, it actually is not as big as it looks. Um, that was a hard part when you see something flat on paper and then you actually physically go to the, the location. Um, it is in line with where my shed is and um, where my fence stops um, at our house. Um, in town, and uh, in terms of um, the noise, uh, the businesses that would be a company in that building would be mine. Um, I'm expanding my spa, which is a very quiet um, business, and that would be um, taking up a portion of that. And I know this has nothing to do with HTC, but I just wanted to rest everyone's mind. Um, the other portion would be a tea shop, um, so people can drink tea on the porch. Um, there's a doctor's office that has asked to come in. All of these businesses are basically nine to six, nine to seven. I would not anticipate any of them to be open longer than that. Um, and in terms of uh, the rowdiness of the bar, um, we don't have anyone parking currently in our salon parking lot um, from the bar or from the Charles. We made that very clear to Bryce um, when he opened that we cannot allow for anyone but patrons of the salon uh, to be parked in the parking spot. And um, we will also have towing uh, signs out. And if it makes the, the community feel more comfortable, we will uh, also schedule someone to do um, nightly, uh, basically a nightly watch uh, so that um, anyone that is there that shouldn't be in there after business hours will be towed. Um, I don't ever uh, want the community or neighbors to feel uh, discomfort with us. So whatever I can do, I will. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to move on to the next application, 7038-355 Milltown Ave. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Mr. Mayor, Council Members.
Larissa, you can take it with you. Oh, okay. yeah. I'll let you know if I need it back.
is a part of the trim that goes around it, not the sash. This is part. Joe, do you know what part of the window this is from? Sorry. Um, <laughs> While you're looking at it, the other issue is installation. Sliding window, the glass goes right yeah. here, so, and it looks like weather strip that goes in here. Yeah, so I'm not it's showing not a, you. It's not a double hung. No, no I'm showing you access windows. to the material, so that's my question. Application of the window. So what we see often is you're putting a box into the box, so we have a huge gloss of light because we get maybe three quarters of an inch all the way around that's eaten into. And so the windows are smaller than what we see right now. Can you speak to the installation and how so we're going to that? custom fit replacement windows. If we did full frame, you wouldn't use glass, but you wouldn't paint the historic integrity. We're keeping everything on the exterior. And the only way to do that is to do the custom fit replacement so you will lose glass. What is full frame? Full frame would be ripping all the trim on the exterior off, ripping all the trim on the interior off, and I know we want to preserve the so interior it's, trim. It's new construction. Yes. And all the porch windows are remaining. All the porch windows are remaining. So let me ask. You know we can't get approval for. Mm -hmm. So if we cannot get approval for this and for the glass. We are willing to do what's there now, replicating the clear glass one of them. Okay. Um, so they prefer the grids between the glass. I've never gotten them approved in the past. I didn't, you know, we sort of, you know, we knew we were going to figure give it a shot. Yes. Um, but I suggest, I just don't like the one -over -one. you know, so if we can't get approval for that, we would like approval for the one over one. Just for the record, to what screen are you proposing? Full screen. So full screen. That will be mounted. What do you guys call? So they're going to be full fiberglass screens, and they're going to be mounted to the exterior of the frame, and it's going to be black or silver. It's going to be white to match the window, so that you can't see it. The screen. The screen frame. Yeah, but the screen itself. The screen itself is a fiberglass screen, right? Yes. I was going to show you the screen, but I think you guys know. Then there's that. So there mm -hmm. is another grid option that we didn't bring away because we didn't have in the past. Okay. So what it is is I'm gonna. It's actually not in the book either, but it's a it's a full divided light mounted on the exterior of the window, but it's not mounted on the interior, so the homeowner could be able to clean it easily. Okay. So it would look more like a full divided light. Okay, so you get similarly divided. You get half as similarly divided. Yes. With the, with um, the spacer bar. Without the spacer bar. Just stuff the outside. Just, yeah. okay. Apply to the outside. So we would also be willing to do that. So those are the three options. I think they're really, they really want to replace their windows. Have you gotten the price on those? So, mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can look at that one. We can look at that one. The, the, Thing that actually led us to doing our windows is we had our installation done up the last year, and they left all these really nasty little holes all over the place. And we have to have the place painted um, because the windows are in such bad condition at this point. Several of them are cracked, and there's lots of other issues. I wanted to replace the windows before we do the paint. We've got somebody for painting. We've got somebody for roof. We've got somebody for our bathroom. Um, <laughs> Um, and if we needed to pay a little bit extra for the windows, um, we can take that off of one of those other projects. So, thank you very much. Is there any other information that you need from me? Or that would help this? Uh, I think we have. Oh, we Thank you. Thank you. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Um, oh, wait. Well, and I, I don't know if there was a question. I'm Joe Valentino. I also work at the Gold Anderson 800 Corporate Up. Did you need to see a picture of an insert window and what it looks like with the glass loss, or do you know what it is? We know what we're doing. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Application 7039. The application for four wells. That's a stack. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good. Hello. Matt? 
Picard, CEO of Picard Corp, Cranston Avenue, where is your Uh, we're looking to construct a 10 foot out by 16 foot long covered front porch on the existing structure. It's a single story ranch that has a uh, four inch of the weather cedar clapboard on the exterior. We'll be matching that on the porch. It's going to be solid railings, as you can see in the drawing. The decking will consist of cedar material, which their treads will be cedar material. The skirt is going to be a concrete board rubbed with stucco to match the foundation that has quite a bit exposed. The house, as you can see from the design and from the picture, has a walkout garage, so there's a lot of concrete exposed, so we're looking to match that. Do you have a picture of the railing? It, it's basically going to be a wood rail with two by two square spindles up the top and bottom rail, four by four bottom posts. How was, how was that design chosen? Is there another part of the house that has the same? Uh, no, nope, there's nothing on the house that has that. The house is a very basic, all the windows have basically a, a brick mold casing, corner boards are one by four. There's no flat face here, flat soffit. There's, there's no detail really. There's nothing, there's no crown moldings, there's no bed moldings on the house whatsoever. So we went just basically with a simple rail to keeping the simpleness of the of the face of the house. The, so going around to one little bit of detail you're doing in terms of the uh, base for the, yes. the columns. The columns are square, they're gonna be wrapped with something or it's gonna be painted. They're, they're gonna be square pine, they'll be wrapped with pine and then the top cap and base is probably just gonna be a small square molding. Again, because the whole house it, it's simple. It's yeah. a very simple basic, you know what I mean? It has Knock it down, but it has oh. very little character to it. It's immaculate. And the uh, railings will be painted on that. The railings will be painted, the stair risers will be painted, those and the columns are all painted white, and all the clapboard will be stained brown to match to match the house. Thank you very much. Okay. No, I'm sorry. No lattice work on the side, public side of the. No, it's no, all it's all going to be concrete board with with a. Oh, um, that would be stuccoed all. Around. All stucco, all the way, all three sides would be stucco. No, that's 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 Applicant is withdrawn. Seven zero four zero thirty Center Street is withdrawn. Application seven zero four one for one twelve Church Street. Good evening. I'm Mike Morissette, three twenty one Church Street. I'm actually here for Phil Rukia. Phil's a family friend. That's when we step in for him. He's uh, he's away right now. Lucky him. What do you got for us? Well, uh, what Phil is trying to do is actually bring the house back to its original state. Uh, what he's proposing is, do you have some pictures? I think they're all good. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at the existing, I'm sorry. I was going to scroll. So if you look at the existing house, the, the top photo, uh, you see where the lights are uh, on either side of the door and at the corner. Uh, there's actually uh, what appears to be covered uh, with plywood at some point uh, uh, during the age of the home. The, uh, the details for the porch were actually covered with plywood. The plan is to remove the plywood and expose, and if you look at the bottom picture, the details as far as the woodwork for the columns. Uh, 
what we have is if we go to the next page. If, if you go into the porch and you look on the back side of the plywood, those pieces of wood already exist. Okay. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and coincidentally, it also keeps in, in, in the feel of, you know, we have as, as a photo reference, uh, number 72 Church Street, but also 104 Church Street, 86 Church Street, and 48 Church Street. All have the same type of design as far as the porch. The plan is also to remove the glass and the window and go back to the open porch design. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. No, it doesn't. Well, it's just going to look a lot better. Every time you look that, it gets better. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyone have any questions? Anything for the press? No. Hearing nothing. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to thank you. Thank you. Uh, application 7042 at 6 Railroad Place. Well, it's a no. My understanding under corporate will, Cromwell. Um, application is to replace three windows. Two are on the back. So first and foremost, they have all vinyl replacement windows right now. Uh, they're in horrible condition. Um, but they are vinyl, yeah. And <laughs> the back, so the back two windows you can't see from the street or from the side. And I did take pictures on all four sides. The front window. It is, you know, it's kind of a dead end street. So that would be the front facing window. What they'd like to do is phase um, a few windows at a time and do six over one. So it is an engineered wood polymer composite by Brex window, slope sill, and where it's intended to take the old replacement window out, put in a new replacement window in, um, re wrapping the exterior. And do a, a full divided light, a simulated divided light, six over one. You're going to pull, you're going to pull the old box, right? In other words, the, the replacement window. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. going to pull the box of, of the replacement window, right? Uh, Sashes? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, box. yeah. We're not inserting into the okay. old. Yeah. All the plastics going, get down to the original wood, adjust the repair of the original rock, um, hang the new window in the original. Wood frame. However, it looks like that was an add on. That front facing window looks like it's from maybe the 50s. I'm not sure if you have the experience the property or not, but the, the, there's, there's a lot going on in there. But basically, the only window that you can see um, from the front of the property would have to it. Oh. That's from the 70s. That's, 19, that's 1973. Okay. Uh, so if it does not need, let me see. Uh, uh, so it's two over two. Uh, like I said, does it need grids? I haven't reached out to homework, but she's not opposed to doing no grids because that's you know like for like with what's there now. But she wanted to do. Can you talk to do something else on the side of the house? There's a lot. There's a lot of windows, and they are. You know, it's a young couple. They got a good deal on the house. Yeah, they need to do a lot of work, and it's going to have to be a phased thing over. So their intent, though, is to replace all of them, but they can only do a few right now. Is what you're the most important windows are in the back of the house, where they're expecting. You know, they're going to be expecting, and, and they want to take care of those two. But the front window, that's the front facing, is being held up with. Two by four right now it is completely warped. Um, you know, so it's it, it okay. needs to be it needs to be part of a first mm -hmm. phase, but it's just not feasible financially to do more um, at this point. So <clears throat> again, if you if you're familiar with the property, it's not really on a main street. It's kind of a Side road, and it's kind of one would argue it's one of the gateways to Old Bridge, yeah. But you're right, it, it, it's a it's older home that um, retains very little of its old detail. So, if, if there is any feedback, uh, you know, what would be approved? This is, you know, we're not in a hurry here, but we do want to get something because ultimately, before the weather turns cold again, we would like to put these windows in. 
Are you well caffeinated? <laughs> is west to the right oh i see sorry to the right of the french doors because once we added the two feet it just visually looked better and then we had to move a fireplace fence because of that uh if you look at the what we call the sunroom which is sort of that bump off to the right of the original house um we're gonna extend that two feet east as well uh to there, the whole look looks better that way. And in doing that, um, the architect also decided to move the roof line up nine inches. And that architecturally now fits better with the beam. We can make both roof lines structurally better, which is what he said to me, and I can't explain it further than that. <laughs> um, we also decided that we had reduced sort of our windows on the east side of that sunroom and wanted to go back to more open light like we have now. And so, in, yeah, we go up. Um, we switched the three windows there with a four door slider, which actually looks pretty much identical to the windows we have currently. They don't go to the floor like the slider will, but they're like a foot off the floor. So visually there'd be no difference. And in order to do that, given um, current, Zoning, we have to extend 18 inches because apparently our windows now would pass zoning for. Um, we decided to put a basement underneath that space. I think generally for the HTC, that's mostly irrelevant because we were going to have underneath there a retaining wall like we do now, and we're going to use those same stones which you guys approved for the rest of the foundation along that foundation. So it looked like a retaining wall. They're just honest to tell you it'll be a basement behind. And then because moving the two feet eastward is impacting the deck, uh, we thought we much like it looks now, we would bring it up to mate with the back of the furthest east portion of the addition. So it goes a few feet further east. Oh and we're having those lights. Visually I think that looks better with the French doors too. Or we could go 
this. I'm not a commission, but part of this in the 18th century council point out, probably having to get up and point out the screen where this uh, said beam and pipe are generally located. Yeah. Which view do you want? I'm assuming it's for the rear of the house. Yeah. So, uh, Doug Wasella, DBL contractor, 37 Belmont Street, Ledge Hill. Um, I'm sort of, you know, when I introduced Maddie as an architect, Mike McDonald, who might be on this week. Anyways, um, I'm kind of late into the process, but you just can see this. Um, so, so, beam, beam and pipe is structural. Existing house is that what it is that impacted some of our work? But one of the things I just wanted to point out is I mean, I spoke at the end of the last meeting just informally, and it's a little bit of shock and awe about the side that's the this misinformation. Sides basically the total square footage of the padded living space on this whole thing from the original application is 95 square feet, basically two feet. Out towards the coast, on it, or towards the and that was um, not just because they decided that um, we need to repeat. As the architect got more involved in the design and the engineering, we ran into some um, issues with undermining the foundation of the build a shell, so we can't excavate it. That's where basically the extra two feet. But again, there was a little bit of, um, as I, I was just listening in, and it was like, oh, yeah, you're at 900 feet. It, it really is 95 square feet total. Are the beam and the pipe just right here? No. Yeah. So that's the addition. The beam and the pipe are in the existing. Where, where the, the addition meets the existing house. Uh, I think it would be easier to show it on the one that is a bird's eye view. Like 145? Yeah. Here, so, let me make it bigger. Hold on. This is the, the beam is roughly here. So again, so sticking with the, the reason for the extra square footage, the extra two feet. Originally, the sun room, we'll call it, actually creating that foundation. It's pretty much been determined at this point, it's not going to be able to be built. It's not a deep enough wall, so it's not a thing. So we have to put a foundation. A lot of that material under the existing deck on the back of the house is all filled right in. So we have to dig down the suitable soil. So we're not going just across the line. Only eight feet down. So you're going eight feet down, it might as well not go on. Is that actually the source of this? I don't think I don't think it's an issue. I think we're trying to get clear in my mind what the changes are. And actually I'm looking at Tim page one forty three. It's all the yellow and orange and green colors. Yeah. That one there. Yeah. So I mean Going back to this cold two feet isn't going to make much of a difference to your street view from here. I think the concerns that I certainly have are primarily that entry, what you're calling on the drawing entry sunroom. Yeah. Uh, so you said you're going nine inches taller. Correct. Okay. You're going two feet out from the back. Correct. Okay. And you're changing the picture of the roof to be symmetrical from the back. I don't think the roof has changed. That never changed. The reason the roof rate, the ridge went up 
night, it's just because you're expanding the building by two feet. So okay. when you keep the pitch of the roof, yeah, you gotta go up. You gotta go up. Yeah. I also I I thought I didn't include this, so I don't know if I can show you this tonight, but I thought the printout was from the front facing view, the difference of like how it looks versus what is currently approved. And it actually makes it a little more symmetrical. So this is what we're asking for tonight. And this is what's currently approved. And that extra bump out creates just more symmetry. Symmetrical to what? To itself. To itself. Yeah. That's, kind of its own. That's, a, yeah. that's 18 inches, by the way. This is not part of the pattern. Uh, well, one of those no, pages you have, uh, but you, you don't. This is the original uh, submission. Okay. This is what we have. No, we don't need to have this on. That's all. Yeah. Oh, this okay. is in today's packet. Right. I just yeah. want to, he's just doing the table. Uh, okay. So, uh, going back to that, the uh, yeah. yep. page 143. Yeah. No, no, I said 42 is the one I want. Uh, on the left hand side, there's what you're applying for today, and the pink on top on the bottom is what's existing. The distance from the eave to the top of the windows on the bottom is a lot bigger than the top. Is that because the windows are a lot bigger, or is the roof that's been brought down? I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. This is the beauty of being in person. <laughs> <laughs> this distance from the E of the top of the door yeah. is basically zero here. Yeah. Here, it's significant. Mm -hmm. Is it because the door and the window are much bigger, or is it because the roof line has been dropped lower? I think the door is lower. The roof line has not been dropped. That, that's a great question. Now, I have to question the week. Do we have a picture of an actual picture of the house? Currently? The house mm -hmm. uh, because I'm just not sure that was drawn after that. This is what I couldn't do for two years. Welcome back, Willis. Still, we raised the floor. Well, the new. It's not going to be a great view. Well, so that's what people are going to see anyway. <laughs> That'll be the view. I'm sure that's right there. I wonder if that door is closer to that view. And what's wrong? Because I look at it, said, you know, what changed here? So, other than well, being curious, which is certainly fine, is there a concern about that? Well, it was step school, but now you're stepping up a few steps. One step that's there now. I think, well, that's no different from what's currently approved. But the right now you step down to go up, and it should wind up left, basically. Or there'll be one step, so whatever. So right now, if you walk in that side door, you're saying you step down? Well, no, we go, when you follow that brick walkway, you go Slow. down a step, down a step. Then across the ways, then up a step, up a step. So you open the door. Yeah. You walk into a flat floor. Low. No, you've gone up a step. And then, yes, basically flat. Yeah, yeah like a pressure. Exterior step. step. Yes. Exterior. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. You're not yeah, stepping yeah. down. Yeah. You don't have to go up. Yes. Yeah. But if you let, it's hard to tell in the picture, but that paver sidewalk okay. actually Thank has you a know. step at the corner of the house. Claire's pointing out my, where I'm coming from, where what I'm seeing is. Kim, if you can go back to 142. Yes, sir. Right now, the door is below the level of yeah. the main house. Oh, yes. We, we're we raising yeah. that up. That's we're, already part of the current. So, so that's why that. Yes. Right. So that floor is not getting any higher. Just yes, the so roof, not even. You can answer this. That, that's the next question. These are all the, all the things that have to be. Part I 
second i just want to make sure matt kept chiming in so i don't know if he's trying to are you trying to, to chime in matt no uh no i got dropped a few times it's i have terrible connection for some reason sorry okay just checking no it was matt kept coming in and i didn't know if he was trying to get our attention to say something so i just wanted to check in oh we're okay Okay. I think we're good unless is that your architect? Uh yeah, Mike is our architect. I don't know if he do you need to say anything? I think we're good. Thanks for I think we're all set. Okay. Thank you. No more questions from the commissioner. Anything else for us? Thank you so much. Any public comment? Favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on. I did think one of our neighbors, they copied me with the Zoom thing on something. It's on, um, oh, you have a public comment. They have it at this point. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, we have one from uh, the neighbors on 408 Hartford Ave. Uh, they are, uh, they voice their support of it. Thank you very much. Application 7044 for the application for stand support. Sure, we're we're having technical issues. So he um, said, if he had a hard time, if it could just be looked at without him. I have addressed that as well. It's supposedly coming down. I was told, and now it's on the record. Um, so you don't have anyone. Um, he was going to try to zoom in, but it 
is probably an issue. There right now. So in the last week or so, there's been a little demolition, and there are some big granite steps there now. Not, I would say not fully installed. Um, they're not perfectly tuned. I think that was the the goal he said was um, to have them not polished. But I think if you have not had the chance to see them with the flooding this week, you need to drive by. Again, not able to join tonight, but maybe um, there aren't, there isn't even any documentation, just it's simply the removal of the white fence that was installed recently. All the fence, the front and the side. The whole the thing. thing. And something will come eventually, um, but that is to be determined later. Thank you very much. 
much. It's also not withdrawn, um, but she's not on, and I'm guessing she had issues also. Um, but this is her fence that's being proposed, also a stockade. And then the metal, I believe she is looking for it to go across her driveway. Do you know if it's one long section that like rolls out, or is it two sections that open out? I don't know. There's a divider in the middle, so I'm going to yeah. guess that it's two. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor against the application at 30 Center Street? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 7049, the application for 42 Elm Street. Stan? Uh, Stephen Lett, 40 Church Street, Newington. Um, Customer is on 142 uh, Elm Street, uh, proposing to strip their existing aluminum siding and trim work, replacing it with vinyl nasty cardboard double floor siding, new trim work, fascia, rake, everything will get rewrapped, and the color would be Tuscan olive. Um, in addition to what I had sent you originally, I did want to put a cedar panel on the front entry. Rough idea of what the Tuscan olive would be uh, colored to see here on the front of something like that. And that's something I can do. So the front entry means underneath the where this window is. Okay. This is an inset yeah. about four feet mm -hmm. along the garage. You have your entryway, the entry door is always on the side yeah. panel right there. So we'll yeah. that. We'll enter here like that. This year. Okay. A trim around the windows is remaining white. Yes. The panels under the windows are remaining. Those would be eliminated. They have like a raised panel that's yep. mounted right on top yep. of them. So right. that would be. That's a little bit right now? It's just a panel they have in there. I don't even know what it's constructed of. The wood is wood. Yeah. You're looking to cover that up. Is that the wood from the side? Remove it. Yeah. Is it older than the side? Or the side? Yeah. Is it older than the side? Um, oh, so sixty-five, I believe. Around the door, is it? Are you talking no, about? No, it's underneath, underneath the front. Like oh, so okay. it's the front gable. Actually, it's original to the house. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is a picture taken in nineteen seventy-three. Okay. With cedar shakes on the whole house. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's what's underneath the aluminum. Mm -hmm. It's the only part we could see is. Um, we didn't we didn't well that's from they had tree damage we didn't touch anything on the house yet but um we've actually had tree damage twice once mm -hmm. once with the tornado and then so there you go. this was a the large limb of a tree in the tree in front of the house for the electrical line off both sides so, so, so it's under people correct yes so the little no, that's uh, the matches uh, yeah. But then your plan to remove those panels would be the shorter the shutters uh, to max the windows there right. too. Correct. Not the full yeah. Pretty much the match what's on the what's happening inside the track next. Now we know if we have that shutter here. I don't know if see from this picture, but I think there were shutters on there. Yeah, they're different color, they're different colors of the And those big vinyl over. Similar look or pattern. Correct. Yep. It's blown up behind you if you want to see it. Yeah, I think it looks like there's shutters. Yeah. Right there. That's certainly on the front of the house. <laughs> yep. On the louver, there's a peak there, so that would be a vinyl insert or two. Or What's that? With the banking louver up top and the peak. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, the gamble event? Yeah. Yep, that would be what it replaces for the vinyl louver. Um, it's pretty much identical. It's right now. Trim color Contrast or white. 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 Yep. So the roof would be white, trim work would be white, trim around the windows, trim around the doors, everything would be white. And that's the uh, siding, the Tuscan olive. And then this is the autumn uh, harvest, which is kind of a brown um, color right here. Yeah. Rather than the vertical board you have now. Correct. Is this a vertical board it's aluminum too? Or? Yeah, it's white aluminum. Okay. Yeah. When I stand on the street, no, I have it's kind of tough to tell. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. If anyone else has any questions, reach out for us. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor of yes? None. We take the LP motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so voting tonight, um, Boston. And then, yeah, so did you second that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so classic and then um, Chris on uh, 400 Carpet Avenue. And I'm actually going to abstain on our last application also because I think that's fine. So I'm going to see how I can feel like I should vote on it. Um, so we'll go to the public meeting application 70290 application for 38 Old Peter Lane. Can I have a motion? Make a motion to approve with a stipulation that the Privacy screening be a dark, a dark color or match the house color. The supported post shall be a six by six post, preferably with some softening of the corners. Can you say that last part? Six by six posts and six what? Six by six posts, yep. preferably with some softening at the corners. Uh, my concerns from last meeting was the massing of the deck, the massing of the uh, privacy screen. In fact, the privacy screen was hanging up on the second floor with nothing up to support it. That's been addressed by the screening that they proposed to put under it. And I think. Just to clarify, when you say you're stipping the privacy screening to dark color or match the house, you're talking about just on the upper deck, not below. Yeah, but that's the privacy. The right. stuff below I is just to there. Yeah. I think they addressed our concerns yeah. and the changes that have been made are appropriate for the house now. Anyone else? All those in favor of approving with the stipulation say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the application is approved with the stipulation. Application 7036, the application for 111 Garden Street, and I have a motion. Second. Um, it's a great application um, with detail. There's a few details that need to be worked out. We talked about some changes with the roofing. They need to get a little more information, possibly some windows or doors to look at. We need the details of that extension connection to the, the garage, walkway. the walkway. Um, and uh, so I think that's really appropriate at this time. All those in favor say aye. 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 The application is tabled. The application for 7037. Who is the second? I'm sorry. Uh, Chris. Thank you. I mean, you all heard what I thought. Yep. Um, I think, and it's not a typical place to say this, but the sight lines are quite bad. The people down on it, you see a good deal more than you've seen, and you're standing a few of it is for the last. I, parking is coming, parking is an issue, parking is parking gap in the street. As you heard, people will be pulling into the slot parks away from. The, 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 the back street, the parallel park on the side. I was back there earlier before this application came and was amazed at how much the fence actually does block the parking. Um, we are not in control of commercial. We're 
not in a good school shop. We're not in control of our costs. If it was a porn shop, we would not be able to do that. An architect hat is what you do. I think there are, I think there are massive issues with this application for zoning, but they are not applications that are, they're not pieces that are our responsibility. If I were going to try to tweak it to think about some of the neighbor's concerns, we could pinch it in away from that property line with the pieces themselves to get the real room for maintenance that the thing right there was a good point. We could drop the back part of the thing to a addition to one story, not the whole length, but we could drop that down to one story. That might make some of the issues of the neighbors concern over the back mapping. But on Robinsville, we really don't get much sense through the houses of the height of the partition. So that, that's my feeling about it. Um, there is, a, so we talked about the brick, I would want to get a better sense of what the brick is, and maybe we actually need to apply a little bit more junk. But I do think we missed that detail on the chimney. I was focused on really, as, as opposed to the details on the application, the size and the scope and the massing. Yeah. Um, you know, our streetscape view, the proportions on that lot relative to the other buildings. The dumps, um, sorry, the dumpster and the one that would be and so that was a good point. Right, there are some other details. And given the scope of the project, yeah. um, the comments that were made tonight by the public, I think, in fairness to everyone, a little more time to simmer on it um, makes sense. I think that, um, you know, if this was on a, on a larger parcel of land, I think it would be absolutely spectacular piece of business property coming into the district. But for me, more of it. Right. But you'd also have much space to work with around it. Uh, for me, it's just uh, too large of a building in a small lot, regardless of parking. I'm not even thinking about parking. Parking is something everybody has a problem with in this town. So I uh, think parking out of it. But what it is, but what it is as a building, on that piece of property, I just see it as too much of a massive for, for I mean, it, to your point, you make some good points. You could scale it down, you could bring it back. I think if you scale it down too, then you may be scaling down some of the parking and that would change it also. Live more green, need more green space. So it's not all of it covered. Well, that could be in a few spots and that's it. Yeah. Um, I will say, I mean, I, I think there's no question that that adaptive reuse, which is what we're talking about here, would be far more practical. One thing, originally one thing within the Green 2 planning and now commercial, is the most difficult piece that we work with. So we've got something that would cost us more. I'm not going to say the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but this, we can't go back. There's so much change. Go back to he's playing on the wall and you're playing on a driveway. It's uh, a commercial property that's surrounded by the Yeah, so it's it's, it's uh, well, it's a big place for the residential. I mean, it's a mixed use. It hasn't been used as a commercial property yet. It could be because of where it's owned, but it's a mixed use. Yeah. So you call that SDP? No, not a project model. to this degree. No, 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 no. Yeah. Come on. So, let me take a step first. Um, some of the things that were addressed by some of the neighbors, the lighting is, it would be nice to see a nice lighting scheme. Yeah. I did, I and I think lighting can probably be addressed by keeping it below the level of the fence. Yeah, the, the most unobtrusive you can get to the bedroom. I don't, I, I don't think, well, I'm sure, Ms. Lee can correct me if need be, or uh, the building officials can correct me, but we don't need big lighting there. It needs enough for safety, and that's it, probably. Uh, the second issue is setbacks, and I am aghast that what works for a residential property works for a commercial Residential property if it's not conforming, i.e. if your building is originally built 
eight inches off the property line and you're doing addition, you can extend that eight inches off the property line as far as you want to go. I don't think that's true though. That's true for residential. Okay. okay. Here, from what I understand is we have a non-conforming piece of property. It's not, it's up against the property line. Right. And the applicant is proposing to extend that straight right. back with a cutout in one side. I'll be honest with you though, we extended our garage and we had to get a two inch variance to continue it back another day. I, know, so I don't know the answer to that. I'm just. I know that was the case from, for my addition right. on my house 30 years ago. We right. change rules. The rules may be different for the uh, so village. Right. Village. I Fortunately, I don't deal with zoning. But it's a logical step is to bring it back to the stop property line. Because if your neighbor is really picked at you and says, don't you dare step on that property, you cannot maintain the property. No amount of fancy lifts is going to let you. We're pelting over. We're down the side. Right. And you're still over. Well, I, mean, I think property. that also speaks to shrinking it. Maybe. So, what I would love to see then is a separation. I, mean, I don't know if it's possible to do whatever the plan inside. But separating at least at the second story level, the front part, which is the original house plus that, what is now going to be a key, two story key, with the rest of the more commercial looking block. Something that would delineate that these are sort of sep totally separate buildings that were added, as opposed to a continuation of the original building. And especially with the choice I was made with the flat roof part, that reads as a separate building. And if it's a separate building, it should be touching the Especially at the second floor level. So to pick up from what we're saying, I thought it might be last but not least, but my concern that's been expressed already is those two flat areas. I appreciate. Explaining why she chose flat uh, lines, but I would prefer to see them pitched. I would like gables for those circumstances. Yeah, I think that would soften the contrast of the house in addition. Okay, so that's the situation where addition only comes on strong to speak to the yeah. silhouettes and outlines. Um, the thing I'd like to see, I'd like to see a couple ideas on how to make privacy not so dependent on how to push the tree thing to go by by someone. Um, as they always do. Especially when they're not there. You know, 30 years from now, none of us are here. Let's say, why did they try to do something? Right. Um, it's not a no, it's just to see, see something different. Yeah. Um, it's tough because they don't own that. Bush or tree, and they would cut it, and it was your reason why it was not really permanent. So, it's kind of half now with windows overlooking the backyards, and, and the tree will be there, but not forever. And I agree completely, although our concerns are different. Yeah, I think that's a really do get a clear shot in front of us with right now because so much of the tree has been taken down. We need to see right through to the Charles. A couple things that surprised me is that I want to be a great player. Right now. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, it's I, been two years and there this you is go. where we are. Uh, <laughs> when I walked back behind, I was surprised how large that flag pot is. It's uh, huge. It's huge. <laughs> I was also surprised how close those Robin's homes are. That abut the back there. They have no backyards. Zero. And I'm sure they thought they had to be zero. Yeah. And, and again, and that was there after the fact to go to um, later. Um, yeah, every, I'll agree with every, what everyone has said. I believe the clarity, I don't think they, their sight lines, in my estimation, are not as bad as the city of Some 
you know, I, I do like the idea of maybe a potential scale down um, a jog uh, at that flat. You know, I did ask that question. I can understand why. Urban is a parking house, or I'm sure the same consternation. Everyone has a little parking, that's a problem to have. You come to a new spot, so wherever they are required, they're operated. We, we can maintain, we, we, our job is to address how it's going to the extent that we can, and also ensure that we can. That, I mean, obviously, you said it, and really, it doesn't matter if you've seen their work before, no doubt. Whatever project does get approved through there, it will be there for the board. Uh, you know, it's been a great asset, very appropriate for that for this district. It may have been a residential at some point, and I don't know, two or three homes. Uh, what, what do you consider commercial? A three family home, a B and B, uh, at Range Fresh, uh, you know, a restaurant across, a, a great big place across. I mean, what, what, what is residential? It'll be interesting there, to see what yeah. they do with the town. Yeah, because they, they mentioned before the terrain or the uh, academy. That's a um, space up there. Six, you know, she said, uh, Marissa mentioned she's working with them. What's going to happen with that? And maybe that turns into grass, or maybe she gets some spaces. But I mean, who knows what they'll work out there. Somebody else is taking food takeaways for that town. Oh, okay, there are cable. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, application is scheduled. Application at 355 Belltown Avenue. Oh, gosh. I'll just settle. And then I will discuss this. Um, I think. Goes between the glass. I don't think it would be an addition to that house. It has to be a flat in that area. Uh, I agree. The, the concept of drills on top of the glass with nothing behind it, from our perspective, it's about the same thing. Right. Well, I think uh, the whole point of having the spacer in between is because you've got that double pane. The, the whole point in the spacer between it is so that when you have the grills on the outside and the grills on the yeah, inside, space. and you're looking from the inside, it doesn't look really stupid that you can see through right. between them. You know, I think it's a tough one. Um, we, we certainly approved, I'm shocked that it's a hollow product, but we certainly have approved um, those windows for um, newer houses. Or something similar to it, but 1760 this house, you know, it just is not. And they've got their original windows. I mean, I, from my perspective, well, the two up, yeah. up are definitely not, and there's two on the back left that are definitely not. Most of the windows are not. Most of the windows are one over one. Right. And if you look at the photograph, the bottom windows here are multi pane. That's 1970. It's tough to see, but yeah. it really looks yeah. like it's only paint on the So we can take a look and, and, and bring them back to agonize them longer. Yeah. Oh, uh, what did you think of product number three? Yeah, but that's no, we, right. we talk about yeah, that's three. Yeah, just well, well half a second. Yeah. Right. So what they're saying is this looks like it's building. I can't say that I've ever seen I, that. Yeah, I've never seen that. Like, I can't. Well, Maybe if they could show it to us somewhere in a house. And then we're looking for the other three different types of Yeah. I just so but but we're replacing with we're pro approving recessions windows for windows that have been replaced. I 
well. You might want to see that document that Buzz. Okay. Sorry. Kim has a document about the history of that house. So I think yeah. maybe like this week is a good idea. It'll give us a little text on it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the application is tabled. Application 7039, the application for Four Welsh Road. I'll make a motion to approve this. I'll second. I think uh, what is the design? Yeah, that's the one that As the, the builder said, there, there's not a lot of interesting details in this house. I think it's appropriate for the house and the era, and I think it's going to be a nice addition to the neighborhood. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the application is approved as submitted. Uh, application for 30 center was withdrawn. And then application. So this is a little bit different than the application we tabled, even though the house is old, it's not as old, but it has already been so pulled from its original origins. There's windows on the side that I don't know when those were put in. Well, um, there's windows at the outside, there's the closed in fortress, there's the addition off the side. There's the siding on it. Um, so I don't, you know, I think that the windows are proposing are almost an improvement from what's actually there at the moment. Yeah. And hopefully the applicant will come back next year and ask for the rest of them. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carrying none. The application is approved and submitted. Application 7043 for 400 Hartford Avenue. I'm going to let Mark run that one. Yeah, I was kind of surprised when the design of the 50 square feet that somehow that will transpose up to four entries. Materials seem to be similar. Um, doubt that we have is probably just a poor drawing as to uh, where those windows will line up with the pitch, but I keep looking at the drawings. So I'm not, 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 not nine inches, as I said, but probably on the order of 28 inches. That's because that whole sun porch is getting raised to the level of, you know, of the house. Right. So this floor right, is going up probably 18 inches and then another nine inches. From, you know, and they're minor to what so the previous. If you look at the first part was large. This, this part, except for this spot, right? The 18 inches, where they're asking for 18 inches. So the, this stuff was, was a the top. Yep. It's just the roof. These are, these are changes that are what happened. Obviously, they're very much needed to come back. As they get deeper into them, they have more changes of this nature. They're going to need to come in and not just do it as a new. They have a responsibility.
application 7044, the application for Spanish Park and Garden Street in motion. Second. It's a beautiful addition. Um, they've got a good plan for upkeep and it's going to be a home run. Perfectly appropriate in that part. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the application is approved as submitted. Application 7045 for 538 Main Street. I have a question to table on the assumption that with the flooding, perhaps one of them had gone to see it. Did you ever have another reason? That, that's with the. I'd like the applicant to come in too. I one way or the other. The brownstone steps. Yeah, granite. Center yeah. granite now. They are granite and will be. Well, as of right now, they are. But that's because they've already done the work. The work is done. Or the work is well on the on the way. Center right. It's a massive change. On the roof, you started. Right. Of course, yeah. yes. Because I was going to say. I'd like uh, to yeah, we know that. Well, I mean, they're there. Brownstone is local stone, and that's what the builder intended. Yeah. Great. All those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, both applications tabled. Application 7046-54 Center Street, Spence. Approved as submitted. A second. Have the appropriate fence. Good, lo good location, it's good, but also a, nice, a nice fence in, the, in a nice location that will have minimal, minimal impact on the district. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, the application is approved and submitted. Application 7047, the application for 249 8th Street. I'm going to make a motion to approve this submitted. To see the fence, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, who second? I Thank you. Um, as much as I generally want our applicants to participate a little bit, the fence that is there now was a horrible execution by the prior owner that we tried to rectify and we were unable to do so. So I think the removal um, is certainly appropriate. It's going to be an improvement over the current situation. Hopefully they'll come back and put something else in and that will be an application for another day. Nothing is done. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Um, aye. 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 I'm just hearing then the application is approved as submitted. The application for 704830 Center Street. Approved as submitted. I'll second. It's a fence, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a little unusual with a different material across the driveway. I think you're right, it's um, a break in the center and not some giant rolling thing that's going to roll across. Um, I think the location is appropriate. Because Beautiful wrought iron right next to it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think yeah. it's appropriate. It'll look very nice. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Bring the application yeah, to approve this. Application 704942 42 Elm Street. I'm going to abstain on this one as well. I have a motion. I make a motion to approve with stipulations that the panels below the windows shall be maintained. Um, and sh shutters on the front of the house shall match the entire height of the window and panel. And shutters on the rest of the house be replaced to match the size of the portion of the windows. Probably not. Match the size. And we got that. We just leave it for the That was us. That was us today. Okay. So another stipulation that the area under the front entryway be covered with chips, plastic chips in our apartment. Can you say that area under front porch shall be covered shakes instead of in vinyl shakes in autumn harvest color? Or I would well, I I wish oh second. 
follow-up. Yes, sir. Um, I would like to wish him that the applicant would stay so that I can say, why don't you hold up and see what Sarah told us. Because it's going to have some really neat detail underneath. We um, made someone on Harford Avenue keep their wood with the flip corners, corners and the house looked great. Yeah. So um, with that statement, maybe Kim could pass it along. I think we're rewrapping a wrapped house. Um, it's not substantially different than what's already there. Perhaps a slight improvement with the mixed materials, siding. Um, but honestly, I would, I would prefer, I think it's appropriate to do what they've asked for, but I think it would be beautiful to see what's underneath and what they can take next step. The owners are not retired. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the application is approved with stipulations. We have approval of minutes from March 22. We have enough people. Uh, with our usual comments for um, Linda's good work and I hope that she'll stay with us forever. Uh, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Now we'll move to the application extension request on 7050 on 400 Harford Avenue. They needed an application for the original project that they were in with last year. Motion to approve as submitted. Second. I'm going to abstain. All those in favor? Aye. 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 For the extension. The extension is approved. Um, Ms. Both, do you have a report for us today? Or do you want more? I could talk some more. Okay. Um, I would like to see what you referred to about Buzz Willard's history of that house. Like that yeah, the um, Tiana, the um, representative from Renewal, asked me what was maybe original on the house. So I called the Historical Society and they tracked down an old Buzz Willard report. That's great. So I'll pass that along. Can you I'm so tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I got an email from and a phone call from uh, a neighbor. And um, thank you. And suggesting that the barn was approved to be torn down by the building department. Um, I checked with everybody on the second floor of the town hall and nobody had heard any of that so i'm sorry what property is that what is it 341 and saying that she had was required to do so which was just and that in a, and evidently i did not see the letter because i'm not a butter but evidently said in the letter the questions called so I have emailed Julie. Um, I reminded her that if that was to happen, um, it would have to go through HTC first. And she. It came close, I gather. Um, so it's a for sale. The last round we closed this up. Yeah, if the neighbors, the apartments were just concerned that the demolition could start without approval. And building has not heard of it. so. Thank you. We have a correspondence. There's no other. No other correspondence. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.